Welcome to Behind the Remodeler, brought to you by KM Builders. I'm Keith Maley, and my co-host, as usual, is Justin Bravo, and we have a special guest, Ben Thorpe of Universal Flooring Supply. And today we're going to be talking about the increasingly popular product of SPC flooring, uh, closely related to what we've talked about a lot, LVP flooring. And this is what we're discussing on the eighth episode of Behind the Remodeler. Welcome back, and thanks for listening to Behind the Remodeler. How is everyone today? I'm doing well. Doing, uh, I'm excited to be back on the podcast. I'm excited to have uh, a third person on. You know, yeah. it's always good to have, I think, multiple dialogues, so it's, it's fun. Ben, how did you get into the wide world of flooring? I was actually born into it. I grew up in a family <laughs> right business is. in a textiles industry. My dad owned a carpet mill back in the day, and... I grew up playing on the carpet racks out in the showroom and stuff like that, but a uh, long, long line. I worked with the uh, Mohawk Flooring Industries, um, L.D. Brinkman back when it was a distributor, so it's pretty much a, a, a continuation of, of that now with Universal Flooring Supply. Well, we didn't expect that. <laughs> we did not expect that answer. That's a, that's a pretty incredible background, so you really have uh, got it in your blood. It's in the blood, and, and I thought I could get away from it, but it pulls you back in. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Godfather, shall I? <laughs> Godfather, there you go. So let's talk about this type of flooring that a lot of people have not heard about. Uh, how long has SPC flooring been around, first of all? Uh, it's a relatively new product. Uh, if you go back in the lineage, you get back to Kentile Products, who brought out the first luxury vinyl plank. The problem with those is that they were a solid vinyl tile. And when you have a solid piece of material, what tends to happen over years is it tends to warp up because you have shrinkage in the product. Mm -hmm. What they've done now with the WCP products or the luxury vinyl plank, and now the SPC products is they've stabilized those products by adding some filler in it. Your WPC, which is a wood plastic composite, that's what it used uh, to be called. It used to be called. And they still kept the, the nomenclature, though, right? Kept the nomenclature. Uh, Even though they got rid of the wood. Yeah, the, the bamboo that they used in it was expensive over time. And, and as that bamboo became in too much demand, it's not a widely grown product. So they eventually eliminated from the product the whole. So now you just have a plastic composite, but it's still they put stabilizers into it so that you now have a very durable product, but it's very stable, so it's very resistant to that cupping. And that's seat. what we've been referring to as LVP most of the time. LVP. Luxury and vinyl plank. Luxury vinyl plank. And now you have SPC, which is a stone plastic composite product, and they infuse limestone in with the plastic to get a more durable product. Uh, probably the biggest benefit that you see in a SPC floor is all your LVP or WPC products are about a thousand psi. When you go to a stone plastic composite, you boost that uh, psi rating to two thousand psi. So now you have a product that is very resistant to indentation, and uh, it's good for roller traffic, like office chairs and uh, gurneys and bell carts and stuff like that. That is good, and, and that psi stands for pounds per square inch. Pounds per square inch. Which can be important in, um, in places like you said where you have concentrated loads of very small, very small little areas. surfaces like, like wheels. Yeah, or uh, high heels, which I don't want to mention that. You mean the, <laughs> you mean like the spike heels? The so spike heels, yeah. The, the regular high heels aren't a big deal, it's those no, spike those heels. spike heels. And sometimes the spike heel has a nail right through the center and that can actually be that can actually be that can actually be all the load placed on something that's a little bigger than an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch right. diameter and that is a lot of pressure mm -hmm. even for a small person that's a very concentrated load standing on two little pegs if you will yes you know so people don't realize what kind of pressure can be generated in normal activities and especially in an office as you mentioned mm -hmm. um, so, you know, some, some, some big guys can weigh several hundred pounds and put pressure on two, and if they lean back in a chair, it's putting it on only two wheels. Right. So right. It, can, it can be, uh, we would think, well, that's only a few hundred PSI, but it's really not, because no, you're, because you're concentrating it uh, on an inch would be 300 pounds on, on two inches, mm -hmm. but if you reduce that to an eighth of an inch contact, now it's starting getting into the hundreds 
of pounds per square inch, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so, so people don't can, think they could make those loads, but they can. You sure can. And uh, it, it definitely can be detrimental to the floor. Uh, I'm not saying anything is impervious to indentation, but you know the SPC product offers you a better front, you know, against against stuff like that happening. You're just going to get a lot better life out of it, right? You know, just as a comparison, some people don't realize how strong is 2,000, 3,000 psi. Um, 2,500 psi is the standard for concrete foundations, mm -hmm. and you're talking about a product that is 2,000 psi. Right. So that gives you a little bit of comparison that that's a very strong product. Most people are not concerned with uh, damaging a concrete floor with a rolling chair or with a high heel. Right. And you're real close to that level by getting at 2,000. So that, that's a really, really nice product. What does the product look like, like pre-installation? I mean, how thick is it? I mean, what's it? I haven't seen one. Uh, yeah, most SPCs are about a 4 mil All right. millimeter thickness. So for the common... A layman, that, that's about a quarter of an inch. About a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch thick, but how realistic is it, Justin? Oh, that's incredible. But if you didn't look at the Feels thickness of it, too. what you think you're looking at is a thin piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so it's a tongue and groove type insulation? or uh, Right, it uses almost, a, a almost locking system. Oh, right. I see. Mm -hmm. They use a really, really finely uh, designed locking system so that it overlaps to, the, to where you see no joints. And the automation that they do that, the milling on that is, is incredible. Uh, it's all hands off, all computer done. So uh, what that gives you is a very consistent product where you had some of the problems like in the early vinyl tiles is, is you would have a bowing effect as you're locking, trying to put all this tile together and you'd end up with gaps on, on the end of the board because it didn't mill right. Mm -hmm. And the automation they have now is just incredible. And, and uh, like I said, hands off. So now you get a very, very consistent, straight, perfectly straight, square product. So that when you get the finished product down, it just looks beautiful and awesome. seamless. And, and uh, yeah, you don't have any variations in it. Right. Is there any compensate. change like with the weather? Like, um, you know, I don't know if it's because we have extreme temperatures here. You know, we can be in summer, be hitting 110, and then in the winters, you know, like we're gonna get this next week would be like what in the 20s. So, right. Like, does is, that affect the product? In any way? That's a great question. Uh, the WPC products, when you buy them, or the LVP, what we call so far, when you take them into a job site, you need to let them acclimate for about two to three days, longer if you can. Uh, it needs to acclimate in the environment that it's going to be in. So if it's an AC, you need to have that AC on, and it needs to be acclimating to that environment. Uh, the wonderful thing about an SPC product is that its stability on it is 100%. Is which means that you can take it out of the box, into the office, install it, and you're done. There's no acclimation time involved in it. That is incredible. So, you know, uh, I didn't really nice realize that the LVP was, was needing that type of acclimation. I mean, that's to be safe because, the, as Justin was saying, the outside temperature uh, in a storage warehouse could be so drastically different right. than what it is inside that building or could have been stored in the cold mm -hmm. or the heat, and sure. then you're bringing it into a... A 70 degree temperature right control yeah. area that could yeah. be 30 40 degrees difference in that right so so that that's good I'm gonna have to tell my guys that if we're doing LVP you need to let it in there for at least two days two days three if you can three. Uh, with the air conditioner whatever that environment of course acclimating but uh, but that's neat to know that the SBC <clears throat> is not going to be an issue no, it's a it's a very very stable product as far as that goes the stone yeah. plastic composite right mm -hmm. SPC so let's, I think let's talk a little bit about, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the details in it, but I think we should talk a little bit more about the beauty of this product. It is, it is so realistic. The, the graining, uh, was, it, was it you that was telling me about the register? The uh, register, what they do now, uh, the SPC products, it kind of depends on your cost. But our upper end line, in, with Universal Flooring Supply products, our upper end line, the embossing actually will go along with the register of the wood. So wherever you have graining, you also have the embossing to match, which gives you a very, very realistic product. Uh, this particular product, which SPC, is, is our intro level, and uh, the embossing just kind of goes along the top. Uh -huh. Even that looks very realistic. Still very realistic. I think mm -hmm. the biggest strides that they've made in luxury vinyl plank 
is the high definition photography that they use Absolutely. for the actual sheet. Absolutely, uh, it's incredible. Your older products kind of look muted and fuzzy. They're just not defined as real wood. And uh, what they've done now with the high definition cameras is give you a product that actually looks like you know real wood when you lay it down. It's it's drives the termites crazy because they can't tell what, what they're looking at. <laughs> so. And they and it'll drive them crazy if they try to if they get if they Trying to give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. But that that is so true and that cannot be overemphasized. A lot of people have seen products that look somewhat like wood. Even the desk desk that we're on right now mm -hmm. is a photograph of wood, but it's just not high definition. Right. And and it doesn't look exactly like real wood, partly due to the gloss, partly look to the to the fact that it's not three, it really high definition, and another thing it has to do with with no texture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to see some wood grain, you're going to feel a wood grain in almost every product that is really wood, mm -hmm. and so that's that's really confusing people these days when they look at this and it has all three of those characteristics, mm -hmm. and when you stand on it, um, you know, people are not knowing what they're standing on. They do not realize that it's not real wood. And I know I've told Morgan and others and other friends that have been with us, I said, you know what you're standing on? They said, uh, wood floors. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> when, we did the, when we did the Altstock Brewery, uh, remember, mm -hmm. I was saying that, hey, you know, this is, this is LVP. And so even the LVP is, is looking really, really fantastic. But I was totally impressed when you showed me how the embossing was lining up with the grain patterns and the knots when you came in here, uh, I guess it was uh, two months ago. About two months ago. Yeah, and you showed me that lining up of the registry on the higher end products. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the price of the higher end products, I thought this is really worth it. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely what I would want in my home. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, in every way, even the knots and the, the grain patterns have striations that you can feel that match right up with that, mm -hmm. that registry of the photo that was taken. Right. So we're getting real technical here. But bottom line is, is there's not going to be any way that you can tell that it's not a real piece of wood because every grain and every knot and every characteristic uh, that was photographed in that wood will have accompanying deviations and striations to match it. Mm -hmm. And right. it's incredible. It's a, if you catch the light or if you install that product near a window and the natural light comes in on top of that, you really see that. And I saw a job... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was in an office area. Had a real long hallway with a window at the end, and I, it just looked like plank flooring. I mean, just wood plank going all the way down the hall. And you could see all that uh, embossing as it followed the grain. It was just incredible. So uh, a lot of that, you know, comes down to who you talk to. You need, you need to always work with a professional. I, I totally, I mean, I, I use Home Depot and, and Lowe's, you know, to grab stuff, but, uh, when it comes down to flooring and, and you want something that's going to beautify your home, you definitely want to be talking with a professional so that you understand exactly what the product is, what it can and can't do, and you need that professional type. Yeah, I mean, some uh, of these... Somebody to help you guide through that or else you'll be disappointed with, with you know, what you, you know, And I, I think of a couple of things when you say that, um, Ben. The, the, one of the things is that you need selections. You need someone who can educate you. If you don't know that there's other things out there, you're you're going to be disappointed later when you find out, and you didn't get it. Right. And right. You're going to start saying, "My floor doesn't look as good as I thought it did because I've seen things that are a lot better." That's number one uh, that you're going to notice. Number two is like you were saying about we we talked earlier about sound transmission. We talked about <clears throat> having a stable product under it. If you just put any. Um, what do you call it, a mat underlayment, right, right. that it might move too much, and that's going to be excessive movement for certain types of products. Mm -hmm. You want the right mill for the right product, and you want to be able to give um, that low sound transmission, especially in second floors, right, where, exactly. where uh, wood subfloors tend to resonate. Right, it tends and, to help transmit that sound downstairs. So, uh, yeah, it really does, too, and, and it can sound like a drum with certain products if you don't have the right quiet down matting. Right. I believe that's what y'all just called, right? Quiet down? Quiet down. It's a, a one and a half mil product. And uh, this particular product comes in three parts. One, you have your moisture barrier. Uh, even though this product, the SPCs and WPCs are waterproof, you can still have mold and moisture 
underneath the product. So what you want to do is seal off your subfloor. So this particular product has a closed cell membrane on top, and then you have a high density foam uh, insert underneath that. And then the third part is that it comes with adhesive tape already attached to it. So the installer just peels it off and, and sticks it together wherever you have a seam. One laying on top of the other. Right, and then, you, then you've created a moisture barrier. The other thing is, is like you said, with the sound deadening qualities of this, uh, upstairs and stuff, uh, the sound transmission that you get through the product into a floor down below uh, is greatly reduced with this. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many calls that I've had from somebody, you know, saying, hey, I bought this floor and, and it's just so loud or, or it snap crackles and pops. And I say, well, did you put an underlayment under it? And they, they didn't even know that it was there to begin with. So that's why I strongly recommend professionals, you know, that can walk them through the right product for the right application. And I really like a product like this that's very thin. I'll tell you, the, the SPC and the LVPs lay down really, really nice and flat mm -hmm. compared to, let's say, people have the experience of the old laminate floors that are floating floors, and they literally are floating. Yes. And they pop up and down, and they give, and, and they click. This product's a lot different than that. If you put it down on the right product, this stuff lays really, really flat, mm -hmm. tight to the floor, and you know it, it has a very, very high IIC rating and an STC rating. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I know your products are rated really high, but this one particularly, the Quiet Down is rated extremely high. It's the, it's claimed to be the quietest sound lying around. So, so that's, that's it right there. That's the, that's our top of the line. What, what I wouldn't recommend is, is your packing material kind of <laughs> cheap material uh -huh. like this. You're going to be very disappointed on the sound and on the performance of this type mm -hmm. of product. So. What's this run per foot? Like a few cents more per foot than that one? Uh, about 10 cents more a foot. Uh -huh. It's worth it to, to get that. It is. Better quality. Yeah, we're gonna definitely be using this with the SPC floors and the LVP floors. But, um, so the beauty is incredible. Another thing that I mentioned is you've got different glosses on these different products. And so when you can go to real low sheen, it's easy to keep clean. It looks more realistic. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I mean, real wood floors start looking kind of cheap because of the glossiness of them. Right. right. They, they look, uh, they, to me, they look almost fake now. <laughs> <laughs> and they are real engineered wood, but right. they just don't look as good. Yeah, and the, the care on, on this, what you mentioned, is, is very easy. Uh, the care? Yeah, you can get a, a floor cleaner. I'm sure you all even have floor cleaner here. But uh, it's just simply spray them off and, and uh, you're done. So. Yeah. And you really don't have to worry about, oh, I sprayed a little too much or something right. like that. Right, or, or, and, you know, if you get too much, I know my, my worst nightmare is going on to a job site where I have a complaint, and it turns out the lady was just taking a mop bucket with water and doing her wood floor or, or her laminate product, and right. it's just destroyed it. It's and destroyed I'm, it. I'm We've like, seen it many please times. Please use the recommended cleaners. Mm -hmm. uh, of what the manufacturer recommends on cleaning your floors just to, so that you'll have a floor. Yeah, and the, and the, the wood floors, you know, just are so susceptible to that. Very and of course, the laminate floors, they had a uh, MBF core, many of them, mm -hmm. and even some of the engineered floors have been using MBF cores as, a, as an alternate. Right, right. But if you get water on those, you're going to have it's problems. A thing. It's a th in fact, I have it in my house. I have, I have one little spot that, like, I don't know, I think the dogs hit it, I think the kids hit it, I think everything has hit this one little corner, plus a little moisture, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's a goner. I, yeah. I, I need this product. This is a, I also like the texture. This seems like it'd be more comfortable to walk on. Uh, comfortable little, to walk on. More, the pad helps a little bit. Uh, the embossing on that, the wear layer, uh, is kind of roughed up so that it helps hide scratches. Mm -hmm. uh, great with kids, dogs, and pets to where you're going to have spills or, or pet accidents or whatever and you don't catch it you know oh sure if it sits there for five six days you're fine i want to i want to uh, comment on that justin it's got traction yeah mm -hmm. like traction yeah that's it's really got a great traction and so so this would be great for elderly too who who maybe tend to slip and fall easily i mean i honestly don't think you'd slip even if you had socks on it would be hard to slip It'd on this floor yeah. because it has a lot of indentations which re, which are following the grain but it's deeply set into the wood, so you really do feel it. And um, just different patterns for different types of grain. Some look like a wire brush, some look like 
a distressed wood, mm -hmm. and and so you're getting the, you're getting multiple different facets of what you might like, but all of them have a really good traction. Very good traction, and that's something that we really do mention to people whenever we we do floors. I mean, uh, you can't do the what's the scene with uh, with uh, <laughs> Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, oh, yeah, where he slides across. across the floor. And, and that looks cool in a movie, but it's not very practical. <laughs> Most people do walk around in floors, and if we have elderly or kids, little children, they're going to slip and fall and bust their butts or their heads. Yeah, there's no sliding your underwear with this. No. <laughs> no, not, you're not going to slide. You're not going to slide. You might, get a, you might get a rug burn. But I, I, I do like this. I mean, to me, like, that's one thing I think people underestimate is the fact that, like, it's not going to stay perfect. You know, any kind of flooring, I mean, all the, all the wear and traffic on there. So something like this that can really kind of hide any of that stuff as, you know, especially, I don't know, you know, we have a little French bulldog that runs all over the house and just like when something, he hears the doorbell ring, someone's knocking, you know, he's trying to get traction in our floor and he's like, <laughs> and trying to get going and like, I just, I'm like, you're I'm cringing looking, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I'm looking at a spot, I'm like, that spot's guy just got trash, you know, as he's on floor. So maybe he could get some grip and just get going right away. Right. <laughs> and, and it won't hurt. That's true. That's it. He's gonna he's gonna trim his nails scratching on that thing. I know. There you go. Yeah, yeah that saves his nails. Saves a trip to the salon. That's right. Yeah, that's a <laughs> side benefit there. Little known side benefit. But uh, so waterproof is just really really a big important thing because water comes from as we said from pets, from people being overzealous with cleaning, mm -hmm. uh, and accidents from just you know normal cooking and so forth. Children getting out of the tubs. We put this in bathrooms. Yeah, and they get out. They have their little their little uh, boats and their little <laughs> floats and their little rubber duckies, and they drop all that stuff on the on the floor, and it does not hurt it. So it's really really incredible. And you know, and, and if you get food on it or wine, uh, a lot of people would be concerned about other products. You know, obviously carpets, some types of tiles and marble and force uh, marbles are are susceptible to stain. Sure. So you don't have any of that issue with this either. Yeah, no grout lines, so you're not hey, staining the grout. Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> you know, that brings up the subject of you're being compared constantly in this business to the porcelain floor that looks like wood. Right. And so we, we tell people, I ask them all the time, have you seen a porcelain floor that looked exactly like wood? And they say, yes. And I said, good. So now you know that the industry has come up with a way of making something look really realistic. But have you ever seen wood floors with grout joints? <laughs> and they say, no. I said, so that's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway. And that's when I lean them to this product and show them, what would you do, what would you say, if I told you we can get that same realism in, a, in other te technologies available in other products? Mm -hmm. But it does not have to have a grout joint. And they really like the thought of that. And they hadn't thought of the, you know, the grout joint. They just kind of accept it. Well, it's not necessary anymore, in addition to the fact that we can do it for about a fourth, a half to one-fourth the cost. If they already have tile, we're going to be knocking that cost down to about, about two-thirds less mm -hmm. than what it would have taken to remove that, put new porcelain tile down, mm -hmm. and all the dust and all the time it would take. And this is really, right. really a big factor with people's comfort in remodeling. You do not have to deal with that dust. You do not have to deal with that extra time. And that dust is a real factor that you're either going to be covering by living with it and eating it and breathing it like most contractors do, or if KM Builders does it, it's going to be an extra expense. And it will be time consuming and we will have a lot of equipment there to deal with that dust and to isolate each room from you that where you're living versus where that dust is. Right. But it is a factor to be dealt with. And we can avoid all that with this product. Now, tell us a little bit about what you've experienced on lay, overlaying existing floors. Uh, well, I was going to bring that up. That's a great lead-in. Is you've got a product now compared to like a porcelain or ceramic product that you have to do extensive floor prep if you want to replace a floor. So if they have existing tile, you're going to have to chisel all that out. You're going to have to prep the floor so that you can lay mastic back down. Uh, so now you've got and when you mastic prep that floor for mastic, I mean it has to be clean. It has to be clean. It has it's to be slick. <laughs> it has to be slick. Right. And then you don't just put the the new uh, flooring down. You have to floor level. Floor level. It's got to be level and flat. You do need a level floor for for the WPC and SPC products. You want that as level as you can get it, uh, just because of 
any hollow areas you, you want to avoid that but mm -hmm. other than that you can go over ceramic you can go over sheet vinyl if it's glued well uh, there's even been instances on commercial carpet where they've gone just straight over the commercial carpet mm -hmm. and it's performed fine uh, wouldn't recommend that but you can do it so you, you wouldn't need the underlayment in that case no you just go straight over it uh -huh. but uh the floor prep on a on a SPC and is is very very slight. It's just leveling the floor. Uh, you don't need to put an embossing product on the tile or sheet vinyl first. You can just lay right over the top of it. So, yeah, that's incredible. Uh, makes it a lot easier, a lot quicker installation too. You don't have the days of waiting for something to dry out. Right, and a lot of cost difference. Big cost difference in that. So. A lot of pluses on this product. You know, every product has pluses and minuses, and you got to weigh all that. Uh, like if you have kids and dogs, mm -hmm. uh, if you're an elderly person by yourself, uh, just the overall cost of a wood compared to this, this gives you a great option against. You know, if you can't afford real wood because it can be very expensive, you've got a product here that you can come right in with, and the installation is going to be relatively easy. So, mm -hmm. well, let me ask you this, honestly. Why would you want to install wood? Uh, some people are just stuck on wood. Okay, but, but <laughs> I don't see it. You can't get away from it sometimes. I don't see it because, but, uh, because it's not a permanent floor. Um, this is a, a floor that's going to last, like, you know, you have warranties of 20, 30 years. Sure. And, sure. and you can't give those kinds of warranties on wood floors that are, at least not that they're going to look good for 20, 30 right, years. Right. They are going to be scratched up. We see floors that have been down for one or two years that people are saying, what's, what can I do about it? And I'm, uh, well, you know, it's really expensive to fix this floor if you don't like that. Right. And some well, floors... You have to sure. sand it down and re-sand yeah. it. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, yeah, I mean it's hard and, on and an engineered a, floor. On yeah. an engineered floor, it's a very thin layer in most cases. Mm -hmm. And on these hand-scraped floors, it's almost a hand-scraping, a hand-sanding process. Sanding process, yeah. Because you have to find all the contours to get those out. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very costly. And so, you know, you, you, you could um, easily replace your floor or go right over your wood floor. In, in many cases, you can go right over the wood floor with this product. You do not have to rip it out. And we're only talking about a less than a quarter of an inch increase in height. They might after they figure out what the repair bill will be on that That's one. it. We've <laughs> talked to people about it. Like, hell, just go over it. Yeah, well, remodeling <laughs> experience, I'm sure you've seen wood floors that were near the front door where you have mist and stuff coming in over sure. time and you see the finish on the wood floor is now cracking and, oh, yeah. and dull and uh and i've seen people that wanted wood floor in their bathroom but even over time i'm sure y'all have seen where by the tub you get mm -hmm. maybe the wood stayed structurally sound but the finish is what ends up oh sure turn you know sure. turning on them so yeah uh, well in the case this type I've... product you, you don't have any of those type of worries with it well, we posted a, a photo on our Instagram and Facebook this past weekend, and we were asking people what they thought, and it was the LVP, but they, uh, everyone was saying wood at first, and then we put a clue saying it wasn't wood, and they, then everyone went straight to tile. I don't think people know how fabulous this product is. I don't think they know it's an option. Mm -hmm. I think it's getting out there and, uh, and, and putting that out there, and I, I know that we're trying to do that. Have you seen it? Is it, is it coming? Like you, you feel like it's really taking over popularity? Is the it growth on, on your LVPs and on your, your SPCs now, just the whole vinyl plank market has just almost flipped the market. When, mm -hmm. you, when I go out, and I'm, I'm a distributor, so I call on, on other stores, when you go in now, you don't see carpet up front. Carpet's pushed in the back of the store. Everything mm -hmm. up front used to be ceramic. Now the ceramic's pushed over here. So basically, you walk into a store now, and it's luxury vinyl plank. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's probably the hottest thing that's in the market right now, as far as a new product, and everybody's excited about it. And the consumers are just loving the product, as far as the durability of it, uh, how it's lasting. You know, the uh, scratch resistance to it. Uh, not that you can scratch anything. I'm not saying sure. it's impervious, but as far as having kids and dogs, you know, and stuff like that, it's just a great product. Yeah, kids and dogs will find a way. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, really and truly, you, um, it's got so many positive things about it. One of the things, too, I think about, you mentioned carpet. One of the good things about carpet was acoustics. Mm. One of the bad things about the porcelain tile craze was acoustics. And this is kind loud. of in between. Yeah. This is kind of in between. And your ceramics are cold to me. Oh, They're just thank cold. you. So I forgot about the warmth. The warmth. I the hate cold floors. Mm -hmm. And this product, and I've, and I've actually shown people, touch this tile. 
It doesn't even have to be on the concrete. No, just, just touch a tile and then touch this product and sure. you're going to see a big difference in the big temperature. Difference. The way it handles heat and the way it dissipates it, and it particularly when you put a pad under it like this, a very small pad, it's not going to absorb that cold from the concrete foundation. Yeah. It only takes a few days at 50 degrees or below or in San Antonio, your foundations are getting cold. Mm -hmm. And they stay cold for the rest of the year. <laughs> and boy, you have this and you're going to get the beauty of wood, or in some cases, you've got the actual tile lookalikes, the porcelain tile lookalikes, and we didn't talk about that, but there are snap-in connectors with this that can actually look like real travertine, marble, right. and you're gonna get the warmth of, of, of a much better, a, a much different warmth out of it, and the durability that we're talking about. I mean, you mentioned there's pros and cons of every product, but honestly, and when I compare, the only thing I can think of that might be slightly less with this product than some other product would be porcelain tile is really, really durable. Mm -hmm. But that is about the only thing, and it's a little more durable than this, mm -hmm. but it's not worth it to have uh, to spend three to four times as much right. to do the porcelain tile in your home. It just would never be worth it to me when you've got a 20, 30 year warranty here. And most people are going to be sick of their porcelain tile long before that. That seems boring compared to some of these finishes. Oh, yeah. And it does, it's going to have grout joints, and you're going to have to deal with that, and the cleaning is exactly. hard. But this is one of the few products that I have gotten as excited about. I don't think I've gotten excited, nearly as excited about anything else that's ever come in the market in my 40 years. Um, he's not lying. He, uh, that's all he talks about, Shelby. He's, yeah. he's, he's, talk, he's <laughs> talked about it all the time. Yeah, I mean, I started in this business when I was 15. I'm 55 years old. And this product is by far the most incredible product I've ever seen hit the market. I agree. And, and uh, you're not too far behind me, are you? Not too far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty close. Yeah, you've been in it. But you probably have as many years as you <laughs> because you grew up on the carpet I racks. Well, yeah, I started out in the warehouse yeah, pulling so, carpet out. So. You've seen what I've seen in this industry. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, fiber cement siding was an incredible thing. But, you know, if you were to compare the two, fiber cement siding is a little harder to install than cedar siding, let's say. Mm -hmm. It's a little more expensive than some others, and I still highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. But this product is not more expensive. No, than you wood. go down in cost. You go down in cost. Mm -hmm. um, well, and the other a products. Product too. Yeah, the other products look great, but this looks better. I like yeah. it better in looks because of the low gloss and the realism than I actually like wood. Mm -hmm. And the cost is down. The you, you know, okay, well, wood is water resistant. If you get the right kind, mm -hmm. this is waterproof. Mm -hmm. Again, better. I just really don't see very many cons against it at all, and a whole bunch of pros when it comes to LVP and SPC flooring. Now, one thing you mentioned earlier, I wanted to, to bring this up. Uh, any product can get damaged. Let's say you drop a bowling ball from your second floor and you hit this <laughs> and you got a damaged plank, you can replace the plank on this. Easily. Okay, you drop that on a porcelain tile. Yeah, you can take that tile out. The problem is, is now you've got to grout the tile back in. There's no way you're going to match that grout with the existing grout. So you're going to see the tile that got replaced. Mm -hmm. This, you end up with a seamless repair. Well, let's use the example in a wood floor. How hard is that to, to do? It's, wood is very hard because you've got uh, random links of boards so at the end of the board, if it's not a square edge and it's beveled on the ends, you've got to find a matching board that length. It's very hard to do. You usually yeah. have to tear all the way out to a wall exactly. to replace that's one what I've got in the middle of the room. Yeah. So you could replace one of these in the middle of the room? Mm -hmm. well, that's incredible. Yeah, standard links on these. So it's it, it takes an expert to do it, but they know how to do it. They know how to and do the it. worst case scenario is you got to unclick several of them and then click them back. They come back in. It's sure. not that big a deal. Because even doing half of a room would only take an hour or two. An hour or two, and yeah. you're done. And if that's what it takes, and, and that's also true, by the way, if you did get water, sometimes we get water leaks in homes where it goes on top of the floor, but it can also get under the floor. Underneath it. And some people literally have, have uh, had floods in their homes. The nice thing to know about this product is it's so waterproof that if you had a flood, we're going to go worst case scenario here. Okay. Your house is one of the houses that got swamped and you had a foot of water or more, you can literally pull this out, let it dry, and reuse it. Just clean it up. Mm -hmm. sure and, and if you didn't have insurance for some, you know, you're one of those who never thought it would happen, 
guess what? You're covered on the floor. Well, how many people get caught without flood insurance? Exactly. I mean, we just had a wow, huge flood up at Lake LBJ and Inks Lake. Nobody ever thought because it's never a, thought of that. It's a constant lake. It's a constant level lake. Right, and they, mm. they flooded the heck out of that. I mean, yeah. it, did it come from the lake or from the streams around? Was it uh, the Colorado River? It was the Colorado River, right? Fed into Buchanan. Buchanan opened every floodgate they had, and just the sheer volume of water coming through there raised the level of that constant. They couldn't... LBJ Lake rose? Couldn't, couldn't, uh, Lake LBJ uh, rose, even though it was trying to spill over, you know, into our Tavis, but it wow. it just couldn't keep up with the amount of water from all that rain. Well, I'm going up there tomorrow. 100-year flood, but uh, it definitely flooded some homes out. I'm going up there to look tomorrow, and I just didn't know the facts on it, but wouldn't it be nice to know that you have this, and I'm sure that uh, some of the people I'm going to be talking to are going to be moving to LBP and SBC floor, and so I really appreciate you educating us a little more. We had a little prep time going over some of these things before so that we could make sure that we understood the latest, because the industry has changed a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and this is, this is really, really nice. So one of the things I wanted to mention, too, is that What's really increasingly popular is large planks. Mm -hmm. And you have the large planks. A lot of people have seen the small ones, two and a half inches. They started going three and a half inches. Then they started going four and a half, five inches, five and a half. Right. And now we're up to seven. And, and some, you know, I've seen some coming out that are even going to be nine inch planks. Mm -hmm. They're really, really beautiful. And you don't want to use a, a seven or a nine inch plank everywhere. But in a lot of your bigger areas, these are going to be absolutely beautiful and look very, very modern with uh, no distinguishment from real wood and at a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. So this is this is really a beautiful look. I mean, when you get a brochure on this, you see that they're taking photos of actual real actual woods. woods. Right. And you, That's cool. You cannot tell the difference. And they're taking not one or two. They're taking hundreds of these photos. So that you don't get a repeat pattern. Right, right. The industry says you need at least seven pictures to avoid a, seeing a repeat in a floor. So well, I mean, it looks like a lot more. That looks incredible. Yeah, uh, when you look at the pictures, you don't see a repeat anywhere in a very, very large area. Right. You do not see the same the same uh, striations or grain or not in any place in a very large floor. And so they not only take the photos and do them uh, randomly, they change where they're at on the pieces of the, the plank. Exactly. So now you've really mixed it up. So you've gotten really hundreds of variations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it. Look, at, look right here. Look at the texture on that. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the texture is just really, really beautiful. I mean, that's the floor you want right there. I want it. I do. Do I get the KM Builder discount? You do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, all the listeners of the podcast. Yeah. Also, you know, this is relatively a new industry, a new product, so you're only going to see this grow more and more with the applications, the type of products, and more and more colors and variations. It's amazing. And that's an interesting point, uh, Ben. I, I think that we've seen the low point in this market. Uh, because as it came out, it started becoming more. You and I have for sure. Yeah, <laughs> the low point, definitely yeah, the low years point. Ago, yes. <laughs> yeah, it used to be. It used to be higher uh, when these products came out. They were asking more for them, but because of technology and widespread industry manufacturing, the prices come down. Mm -hmm. But remember, they were trying to introduce a new product in the market, and right. they had to gain acceptance. So what's only going to happen from here, I believe, is the price is going to go up. Mm -hmm. The standard has, has been met, it is getting worldwide acceptance, mm -hmm. and now we're going to see it starting to rise because people will pay more for this. And I, I honestly, I would too, don't, I don't want you to charge me more, but I would pay more for this than for real wood mm -hmm. and for many of the products that, that are, are equal or, or much more expensive because right. I don't like the way the others perform. Mm -hmm. And I love the low gloss and easy cleanability. I don't think you can say enough about what low gloss does for low or zero gloss, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, people could never do this type of finish on woods before because right. it meant constant maintenance. It meant that it wasn't sealed to a degree and that you were going to have to reseal it. Because it, it was like putting maybe one little layer of uh, sealer on something mm -hmm. that, that was going to break down quickly. Right. But with this product, that, that's the natural look all the time, and you will not see dirt. 
or show marks on it. Again, grain, any, any deep, deep scratches that you would get from, from something like a screw or a piece of furniture that had a nail sticking out of it, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to find it easier to repair under these circumstances. And if worst case sure. scenarios, you're popping out one piece of flooring that you had out of a box that you put in your attic or in your, right. in your closet. And uh, that's going to be easy to fix. So, man, what a beautiful, beautiful selection he brought us. And we're so excited to have your products in our showroom. We want to invite everyone to come see what's in the showroom. And uh, if you have just been putting off flooring, which is probably because of the price and because of what a pain in the butt it is to have it done, those reasons are gone. Exactly. And, and you can do more than you ever thought. People are asking us to do one room, and we're telling them, hey, for what you're asking me to do, I could do your whole house in LVP or SBC for that price. And they're like, you're kidding me. No, we, that's why we wanted you to do just one room was because, right. because we thought it was going to be too much. And they're able to get the entire house for the price of one or two large rooms. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, any questions, Justin, before we go? Man, I, I'm, I'm sold on it. I really am. And, and you know, I had just coming because I have like an outside perspective on it, you know, and I, I remember the days, I mean, just, you know, 12 years ago going into like Costco and buying a pack of the MDF boards and oh, like, yes. and like, you know, laying that down and it's just like, it's just junk, you know, and it's it, just, not even at the time I put it down, I'm thinking like, I got a good deal on this, but it's still junk. And then like, I see this, I'm like, wow, this is, this is a whole new level. Yeah. You almost can't stand looking at your old floors. Once you've seen this, you just are going to be like, how soon can I get this out? Because you realize what you're missing. Uh, I'm already there. Yeah. <laughs> I love the warmth and the cold's coming, so I want some warm floors in my home. I want to cover my tile. <laughs> I'm right. covering it up. Thanks again, Ben. Thank you, Justin, for joining us. Ben Thorpe from Universal Flooring Supply. He is one of our, de our distributors, and we are a dealer for this product. You can see it at KM Builder's showroom, and we've got very, very aggressive pricing on this and very, very uh, aggressive persons that want to install it for you. As soon as you can, you can get in here, we'll get you set up. So thanks for joining the eighth episode of Behind the Remodeler, and we'll look forward to talking to you on the next episode.